Welcome back to the workshop. We are restoring, wait, there's barely anything left. We're restoring this 1915 Massey steam power hammer. And the first objective of the day is we're putting this in the milling machine because this hole is disgusting and it needs to be reboard with the tool that we made in the last episode. So we're gonna get this over to the mill. We're gonna need a crane here. No other way, no other way to get it up there. This needs to be turned that way. So I might as well pick it up in such a way that it's kind of how it's going to go on the mill, right? I might do it. Hello. <laughs> hey, big question, will it fit? Oh, that's a tight squeeze. Ooh. It'd be hilarious if we broke this mill. Can you imagine? Oh, you had a bridge port. What happened? I snapped it. How excited are you to have to set up that vice again? You know, for a skilled machinist, it's not a big deal. It takes about kind of 45 seconds or so. Unfortunately, I'm not a very good machinist, so it takes me about an hour. Oh, that's a... <laughs> look, look at all the goodies coming out of it. That's where my Sharpies went. This is going to be like butchering a whale with a toothpick because that thing is so heavy that if I put it on here in a certain type of way, I could completely twist the machine and then it's no longer square or straight or perfect or anything like that. Oh, are you kidding me? Look, we're hitting that pipe. Uh, we've got this thing in here before. How did we do it? I think I moved the, the mill a bit, didn't I? Yeah. Try and get this thing level at least. Wow, that worked so much better in my head. Gently does it. All right. This is going to be something else. All right. Well, it needs to be on blocks no matter what. So here's what we got so far. We got this thing clamped down here in three little spots. And then underneath, I have three, one, two, three blocks. And what's interesting is those blocks don't move, which is good. That's positive. That's an indicator that on the other side of this, where we have this face, we have made a plane that is touching in three spots. So it is flat. I didn't think it'd be this easy. Now, I don't necessarily trust this contraption well enough to drop the crane down, but I, I wanna see if this is taking enough tension to actually then be able to move the table around and stuff like that. So let's go take a little tension off. That block is tight. This one's a little looser. Mm. And that one's tight. So now that I've dropped the tension down, I know that this bolt isn't doing its job. Let's see. And now that one, two, three block is tight. That's tight. Guys, could you imagine if this worked? Get this roughly in the middle, shall we? Now what we have to do is the arduous process of making sure that everything is square, central, and neat. Now, you might think this is as simple as lining up the middle of this spindle with the middle of this hole. It's not quite that simple, is it? I could get right on the center of that hole at the very top, but still have the bore twisted in such a way that we're going down a massive angle, which would make us have to take an enormous amount of material off to get a smooth bore. We have to make sure that we're in the middle, not just like this, like this, but also that we have the bore perfectly straight up and down with none of this funny business, none of that funny business. We need to be in the middle of the bore at the top, the middle of the bore at the bottom, and it's not gonna be particularly easy to do any adjustment. So, being that we have it on these three, one, two, three blocks, there's a chance that we are somewhat close to having bolted this flat to the table. If it's flat to the table, it should be square to the knee. And depending on how they machined it in the past, it could also indicate that this bore is straight up and down. So there's a chance we get lucky. We could be in store for a big long morning of uh, fine tuning and adjustment. Just what we want to uh, include on our boring day. But first, I think it's time we have a good cup of coffee. But what type of coffee shall I make? I always hate having to pick between my French press, pour over or espresso coffee. So thank goodness we got this little nifty device. This beautiful bit of engineering is an AeroPress. With its three-in-one brew technology, it combines the benefits of all those to make the perfect cup of coffee. Smooth, rich, grit-free coffee with a delicious full-bodied finish. In addition to that, it's compact, it travels well, it's made of super tough material. Ah, but of course, how does the coffee taste? I can never drink anything without spilling it down my face. That's delicious coffee. 
that's really good. Cleanup is effortless. Simply take the cap off, dump the coffee, give it all a rinse. The AeroPress makes a phenomenal gift, not only for yourself, but also for your loved one. And it's got a great price to boot. It's under 50 bucks. And you can get 20% off when you go to aeropress.com forward slash forge. That's my link, A-E-R-O press.com forward slash forge. You can also click the link in the description down below. You go enjoy yourself a great cup of coffee. I'm gonna get back to the milling machine. So now I have the zero of the very top of the hole. Now we see, is it skew whiff and tilted this way? Hey, that's pretty good. That could have been so much worse. Oh, and that looks pretty good too on the other side. Goodness gracious. Oh, I tell you what though, this little valve piece runs down the mid, rotates around the middle of that bore. What I've just found, if this is our bore, is the top area from two angles is perfectly straight. It looks really good. But then as we start getting to the middle third where that has been rubbing, it really hollows out a good bit. Right, so I can't get this to the bottom because it won't go long enough. But at this top third, it looks like it's straight up and down, centered and all that. And I'm feeling relatively confident that it's a good time for a skim pass with the boring bar. And that'll tell us a, a bigger story of how close we are. Hold that there. Slot that up. Oh yeah, we got tons of space. The eagle-eyed will have noticed that we're gonna have to run this thing in reverse for it to work. Don't crash, don't crash, don't crash. Have a look at what she looks like. Gently does it. Oh, we're touching something. We are touching something. Looks pretty round to me. That looks pretty round to me as well. However, there is a problem in that I currently have this tool set as small as it will possibly go. It's not going in any further, but it needs to go in further because it's too heavy of a cut. There's too much chatter. We're going to take the little cutter out and then counterbore the tool holder some more. All right, so the whole idea here is close to cutting, but not cutting. What's the point of that? Uh, so we can see if it gets worse down below, you know? Hey, that was good. We got the whole way down without contact. Feeling pretty good. It's the third iteration of moving the tool out, and we are still not contacting at the bottom. Are you actually going to do a cut now then, or are you still just around? I'm gingerly moving this tool out. Oh. We've got a cut. It's now wide enough that we have a cut here at the top. Let's skim this whole thing down. Okay, the cut sounds like it's getting slightly deeper. The cut is also slightly interrupted, which we should expect because it's a pretty nasty bore, but it's still a very gentle cut. So I'm not too worried. It sounds pretty consistent. I'm feeling positive. For something that's so boring, I really do feel like I'm on the edge of my seat. I don't know about you. You haven't even sat down, man. I know. It stopped. There's now no noise. It must mean the hole is just irregular which is fine and we expect, but we're pretty straight up and down. Oh no, we've now reached the second third where it's not worn and it's not hollowed out. But this is good, I'm feeling really happy about this. Bang! Who do you think you are? That's my job. Got you slightly. <laughs> now this is boring though. Yeah. This is, you're correct, Jamie. Stating the obvious. In what context do you think I mean? I think you are literally describing the machining operation that's happening. Yeah, it is boring. It, it is boring. Yeah, we are boring. I mean, I'm bored out of my mind. Is that what you got up to over the weekend? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is, is pretty boring. I've done enough of this over the weekend. <laughs> Everybody likes McDonald's, right? Like quarter pound of cheese. If you worked in McDonald's, you wouldn't, you'd get sick of quarter pound of cheese. I'm sick of this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to be here forever doing the same stuff. Here is what the next four or five hours of my life is going to be. Let us begin the time lapse. I bloody well think it's been bored. Righto, so the surface finish left by the cutter is not perfect. That is not going to ensure a nice seal, is it? So what we need to do is we need to hone it. Look at this device. To the uh, motor enthusiasts amongst you, I'm sure this is quite, quite a normal tool, but I didn't know what this was until our friend and neighbor Steve let me know about this and what it does. You need to polish an engine cylinder. You can use one of these to hone it. And hopefully we can use this to hone and polish the bore that we have just cut. Question, do I do it in the mill or do I do it out of the mill? Because what I know is that you can use this in a regular drill. Because these things 
uh, move around like this. You don't need it to be this perfectly straight and true and accurate device to hold it. You can just put this in a hand drill and drill it. So because I'm concerned that I couldn't go far enough through to even out the polishing, because I can only go past an inch before I hit the table, which might not make for the most even polish, because also the pressure is happening at the middle of these little grindstones. And so if I can only push it out an inch, we might end up with a tapered bore. I've convinced myself, it's got to come off the mill. The people in the Discord were very upset with this uh, method of mounting this thing. I don't understand why. We've got three points here holding it down. If any one of these fails, it's going to stay just right there. It's not going to move. But yeah, like a lot of the machining setups you see here, probably don't do them at home. Take your own risks with your own risk calculations. <laughs> That scared the shit out of me. <laughs> to be, to you, to be. Maybe it was a bad idea to try and put it on this table. <laughs> Look at how this thing works. We have stones. Looks like this little brass collar here can lock it into a slightly more closed position so it takes up less space in the toolbox. I'm pretty sure this just goes in there. Get a good look at what the surface finish looks like now. And let's see if we can clean that up some. You're gonna put some sort of com compound in there or something? Then. Well, I'm gonna put some WD-40. Just ask Steve what he reckons to use. Hopefully that's what is involved. You know what, I definitely think it's taken off some of the high bits. I think it's smoothed off the peaks of the, uh, of the cut. Like anywhere it's really high, it looks like it's starting to get polished, so maybe it is working. All right, about half a day later, I think we've got ourselves a polished bore. It does actually look pretty clean, doesn't it? Yep, yep. There is a tiny little remnant of some roughness right here. But the rest of it looks really quite clean. What is interesting is that when we were cutting with the boring bar, we were cutting in from this way down. And the best cutting happened at the bottom of the cut. And I think that's because when we were at the bottom, all this weight was higher up on the machine, meaning that there was a smaller moment arm for any vibrations to twist and torque the machine. So there was less chatter and a better surface finish. It meant that we got to clean metal on the polishing way faster here at what was the bottom of the cut than we did at the top. And I just thought that was something that was really interesting. Not that I necessarily think there's rational thought process behind it, but for whatever reason, I thought that the cut would be worse at the bottom. Anyway, this is a polished bore. There is a ton of crap and crud now in between these two valves. And so we need to degrease, clean, and blow out all of that dust, cutting chips, bits of abrasive from these stones. We've got to get it all out of there so that when we eventually hook it up to air or steam, we don't just blow it straight into the cylinder. Speaking of cylinder and what goes inside the cylinder, I just got a call from the grinding shop. Our shaft has been ground. I'm gonna quickly go grab it. Oh, righto, we got the beast. Oh, she heavy. Ah. No, they told me they took about a millimeter off the diameter. Oh, that was interesting. They didn't need to face that. Put a little center in there. <laughs> that is unbelievable. It looks so much better. Oh, you can see just how much off the diameter they had to go because this taper used to be about that long. Hopefully that doesn't cause us any issues. That's amazing. The surface finish is absolutely gorgeous. That's a nice shaft. Right, so thank you very much, Jamie, for making a good head start on cleaning out all the debris and crud. We're going to keep cracking on with that, blow as much as we can out through the ports that go into the cylinder itself. And then with that, we can then put this bad boy back on the machine. Jamie's just giving me a good idea. Let's give this little surface a stone and see how flat she is. I mean, it's very rough and pitted, but is it rough and pitted and awful or rough and pitted and flat? Well, I've learnt nothing from that. Little scratches here, some burr there. This is pretty nutty. It's cleaning off a whole load of dirt. And now we can at least see the uh, cutting lines from when this was originally machined. Stop! 
Down she comes. What do you think about putting a little bit of grease on these surfaces or oil so it doesn't corrode as much? I wouldn't bother if I was you. I think you're going to be taking it up again pretty soon. Why is it not fitting? Oh, it just fits like a glove. Hmm. No, it doesn't. Why does that not fit? No, it really doesn't fit. Oh, there we go. You know what? I think it's just a little bit twisted. What are you cooking in here? We are cooking ourselves some uh, very special stuff. We chucked a little of this sparkle juice in. Ooh. Not hot enough and not long enough. Those bolts are not very clean. But they're still raw. <laughs> well, the ultrasonic was not the miracle device I hoped it would be when I was spending 175 pounds on it, just thinking it'd be perfect for this. So I am now using a nail, scratching away the 100 years of grease and dirt. I miss it, just nail you in the face. <laughs> you got the torque wrench out, Jamie. How many Jamie meters is that? All right, so we got those bad boys locked down. Hopefully not going anywhere. Now Jamie has torqued them. Next up, now that we've got this lovely shaft ground down, we can see ooh, just how much has been taken off. And so we're gonna take these expensive bits of bronze, turn this into that with a smaller bore. Same thing for that little bit of bronze. And we're gonna get started with that right away at the beginning of the next episode. If you have enjoyed this video and you indeed found it boring, please do click like, it'll help us out a lot. If you wanna stay up to date, click subscribe, and of course, check out today's sponsor, which was Aeropress at aeropress.com forward slash forge. Get yourself an Aeropress. They're pretty freaking cool. See you in the next one, bye-bye.